Hello everyone, this is Balu. Welcome to my channel, Civil Cave. In this video, I am going to discuss about shear buckling design methods of plate gutter. In the previous videos, I already discussed about introduction, behavior and also shear strength of the plate gutter. If you have not yet watched those videos, please go through that videos. I am providing the links for those videos in the description. And also each and every video is interlinked. So better watch from the beginning of the series of this behavior of the plate gutter. So you can get the clear understanding regarding the behavior of the plate gutter. So let's get into this video that is shear buckling design methods of plate gutter. Whenever the external load that is P is acting on the plate gutter, it will in turn create a shear stress on this web panel. So let us consider this as a shear stress. Because of this shear stress, it will create diagonal tension and also diagonal compression in the web panel. So because of this diagonal compression, initially the web panel will undergo the buckling, which is nothing but the onset buckling of the web panel. And after that, there is a generation of the tension field action in the web panel and corresponding stress is nothing but the post buckling strength of the plate gutter. So strength of the plate gutter is nothing but the sum of strength before onset buckling and also the post buckling strength of the plate gutter. In the previous video, I also discussed regarding the tau CRE that is nothing but elastic critical shear stress. As the diagonal compression in the web goes on increasing, there is an instant in which the web cannot resist the further diagonal compression. At that maximum diagonal compression, whatever the shear stress which is generated in the web panel is nothing but the elastic critical shear stress. And this elastic critical shear stress which represents the strength before onset buckling. Whenever this buckling is initiated in the web, the corresponding strength which is generated after the buckling is nothing but the post buckling strength and which is nothing but the shear buckling strength we are going to speak about. This shear buckling strength can be determined by the two following methods that is simple post critical method and also tension field theory. Coming to the simple post critical method, it is a general method and which is applied to design of all gutters. It may be welded plate gutter or bolted plate gutter or any other type of plate gutter. The simple post critical method is can be applicable. But coming to the limitation that is, it can be used for the webs of I sections with or without intermediate transfer stiffeners, but provided at supports. That means at the supports, there must be a transfer stiffener should be present in the plate gutter then only the simple post critical method you can apply. The intermediate transfer stiffeners may be present or may not be present. In that case also you can apply, but whenever the coming to the supports, the transfer stiffeners should be present in the plate gutter so that the simple post critical method can be applicable for the design of the plate gutter. Now nominal shear strength can be determined using the simple post critical method. Nominal shear strength of the plate gutter is equal to the shear force corresponding to the web buckling. So web buckling shear force is equal to the shear area multiplied by the web buckling shear stress. Now in the previous videos also I already discussed that is shear stress is going to be resisted by the web. So here shear area is nothing but equal to the thickness of the web multiplied by the depth of the web. And coming to the web buckling shear stress, it depends on the non-dimensional slenderness ratio corresponding to the shear buckling. Now slenderness ratio is equal to this expression which in turn depends on the yield strength of the web and also elastic critical shear stress. And also for different values of the slenderness ratio, this web buckling shear stress expressions are given and those expressions are given in the IS 800 clearly. I am not showing those expressions. Please refer IS 800 for those expressions. The main concept of this videos is to understand the behavior of the plate gutter and also I am not going to derive the expression for this whatever the derived methods like simple post critical method or tension field method. The main aim is to understand the whatever the behavior through the concept how this plate gutter is going to behave. That is the main agenda of these videos. Now coming to the graph if you observe this clearly. On the x axis you can find the slenderness ratio. And also on the y-axis, you can find the shear stress. 
here tau shear curve you can see clearly that is elastic critical shear stress and also this web buckling shear stress also curve is also given so whenever the slenderness ratio lies in between 1.2 to 2.0 this buckling shear stress and also elastic critical shear stress are same that means both are merging at this portion so in in this portion the simple post critical method is not estimating the post buckling strength of the web as the slenderness ratio goes on decreasing the web become thick the slenderness ratio represents the ratio of depth to thickness of the web as it goes on decreasing the depth is going to decrease and also thickness is going to increase so that as the slenderness ratio goes on decreasing the web becomes very thick so here as a lambda w is less than 0.8 represents the thick webs and lambda w greater than or equal to 0.8 represents the thin webs so whenever this slenderness ratio goes on decreasing the web buckling strength is going to increase and it reaches the certain maximum level that is yield web buckling shear stress and it is equal to the yield strength of the web divided by the root 3 so if you observe this curves clearly tau cre that is elastic critical shear stress is greater than the web buckling shear stress in this particular region so it is clearly visible that the simple post critical method disregards the post buckling strength of the web that means it is not estimating the tension field action or whatever the post buckling strength which is generated after the once the web buckling is initiated in the web of the plate girder but coming to the tension field theory it is going to give the economical plate girder and also it is going to model the tension field action in the plate girder but the problem is the strength is generated after the buckling is initiated it is generally in our, whenever the people working in the industry prefer only simple post critical method and also they will check for the elastic critical shear stress because if you observe this graph clearly you have to definitely check the elastic critical shear stress and also buckling shear stress corresponding to the simple post critical method then only the plate girder is safe in the web buckling now let us discuss regarding the tension field theory whenever the c by d ratio that is c is nothing but the spacing between the transfer stiffeners and also d is corresponds to the depth of the web whenever the c by d ratio lies between the 1 2 3 at that time it is going to provide considerable post buckling shear strength due to the tension field action this tension field theory is going to give the post buckling strength of the plate girder due to the tension field action and this tension field theory is going to be <laughs> applied to certain range of girders produce efficient design and also the additional strength is going to be provided due to the tension field action and coming to the shear strength of the plate girder it is sum of the primary buckling strength tension field action strength and also the plastic movement capacity of flanges so this tension field theory is going to model the tension field action and also the plastic movement capacity of the flanges whenever the tension field action is going to be generated in the plate girder as the load go on increasing there is a generation of plastic hinges in the compression and tension flanges at that time the further strength is going to be generated due to the generation of this plastic hinges those strength also this tension field theory is going to give whenever the web buckles along the direction of principal compressive stress you all know whenever the external loads act on this plate girder there is a generation of diagonal tension and also the diagonal compression when the web buckles in the direction of principal compressive stress a new load carrying mechanism is developed along principal tensile direction called as tension field action if you observe this image clearly here the corresponding shear stress acting on this web panel is tau minus tau cr because the tau cre is corresponding to the elastic critical shear stress which is resisted by the web 
before buckling so once the buckling is initiated the new load carrying mechanism is going to be generated in the plate gutter and corresponding shear stress is nothing but tau minus tau cr and this is nothing but the tension field panel so here the element is subjected to the tension and corresponding resistance is offered in the opposite direction here ft is nothing but the post buckled membrane tensile stress and d is the depth of the web and c is the spacing between the transfer stiffeners and phi is nothing but the inclination of the tension field and this image corresponds to the tension field action generated in the web panel now what is tension field it is a portion of the plate in principal tensile direction so here this is the principal tensile direction and this is the portion of the plate you can observe clearly and in this region this region is anchored at boundaries so here this is the boundary region and it is anchored at boundaries to the flanges along the top and bottom flanges it is anchored and stiffener members on either side of the web this is nothing but the tension field this tensile membrane stress in web plate exerts pull on the flexible flanges here if you observe clearly it is exerting the pull on this top and bottom flanges because of the exertion of this pull on the top and bottom flanges the flanges are going to bend inwards and further causing the failure in the web panel so on further increase of the loads the greater pull is exerted on this top and bottom flanges the resultant of plate buckling stress and also the tensile membrane stress act on the flanges till the stress in web reaches the yield value of the web so once the resultant of this plate buckling stress and also tensile membrane stress acts on this flanges the web starts yielding <laughs> at that time this web panel is undergoes the failure and which will further effect on the plate girder and it will cause the global failure of the plate girder and this collapse of the panel which is this panel occurs when a section of the web plate yield and also the plastic hinges form in the flanges so also we are discussing that the plastic hinges forms in the flanges so the flange must be plastic in order to form the plastic hinges this is also one of the most important point because if the flanges are not plastic then there is a no chance of the generation of the plastic hinges so that the further strength of the plate gutter is going to be reduced if the flanges are not plastic so the mechanism is once the load acts on the plate gutter initially the web undergoes the buckling due to the diagonal compression and thereafter the tension field action is going to be generated and further this tension field action will exerts the pull on the top and also the bottom flanges and as the load is going to increase this exertion of the pull is going to increase and thereafter the formation of the plastic hinges in the top and bottom flanges going to takes place so thereafter the failure of the panel is going to takes place so now the strength of the plate girder is nothing but the onset buckling strength and also post buckling strength which is due to the tension field action and also due to the formation of the plastic hinges in the top and bottom flanges so this is regarding the behavior of the plate girder it is very very important to understand the behavior of any structure so in this image you can observe this is the tension field stress at yield that is fv is given and also sc and st are nothing but the anchorage lengths of the tension field and vtf is nothing but the total shear at failure this is the total shear which can be resisted by the web panel and this is a compression fan and this is the tension plan you all know and this is the transfer stiffener and this is the image corresponding to the formation of the plastic hinges in the plate girder so this is regarding the shear buckling design methods of the plate girder in the upcoming video i am going to discuss in further details about the behavior of the plate girder and also followed by the problems and if you 
have not subscribed my channel please subscribe my channel and also share with your friends who are working in the civil engineering industry or for pursuing the degree in the civil engineering thank you